One of the worst weed problems we used to face years ago was wild oats, but fortunately today we have so many good options for wild oats, we want to talk about those. I love it when we get into a wheat discussion and, and I talk to guys that really haven't had much for wild oat pressure and they're, they're like, what are you talking about? You're always focused on wild oats and I've got foxtail, isn't that just as bad? No, they say that one wild oat plant equals 10 foxtail plants in terms of yield loss. This is a really big deal for you on the farm. If you've got some wild oats plants, you got to get those things under control. So wild oats has been around obviously for probably centuries, but we've just now had some great options for control in a lot of the different crops. And one of the best things ever in corn and soybeans was when Roundup came out because quite often we would put a normal rate of let's say a dual or outlook or harness or surpass down in corn well those things just aren't very good they'll give you a little suppression balance flex I'd say is even better than that. Well really the, the best, best product thing, we had was eradicate. Yeah and that's pretty much off the market today so you know we had eradicate well now what do you do well now you just put something down hope for the best and then you clean it up with Roundup later on. In the past all we had was accent well accent today is 25 bucks an acre and it's not even that good on wild oats in corn. All right so yeah as Brian said Roundup is pretty good on wild oats in soybeans you know we can use the pre-emerge herbicides like a Treflan or Sonlan or Prowl and do a pretty good job on wild oats pre post emerge we do have some grass control options there uh, like select max and some of the other grass killers that can work post emerge wheat is really where we struggle with wild oats control and we only struggle because people don't use pre-emerge herbicides look if you would just put down prepare for example even at a cut rate of two tenths of an ounce you're going to have much better control post emerge because now you've thinned out the wild oats weakened the wild oats and you're you're going to allow your wheat to choke out a lot of wild oats plants so get some prepare down pre-emerge it only costs something like four bucks an acre it's no big deal you put that down you're well on your way to a good program post emerge well and it's cheap too prepare is cheap and it's a group two and it gives you a different option so you can use a group one like an axial for example example post emerge now you've got a group one and a group two out there so if you have any kind of resistance starting in your area hey I've got two different sites of action that I'm using I'm going to take a good shot at wild oats and it's not going to be a problem this year here's our other big piece of advice if you're going to go with an axial or whatever product you want to use post emerge you're better off to use that straight as soon as you mix it with a broadleaf killer count on your wild oats control to go from good down to average Okay. And if you only have a few wild oats plants, who cares? But if you've got a lot of wild oats, you got to have great control. Split apply, you'll be a lot happier. Well, wild oats may just be an annual weed, and it may be really only a problem in spring wheat, but it can be a significant yield robber. Make sure you're attacking it with both a pre-emerge and a post-emerge option to keep it under control. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week wild oats, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next.